Well, how does increasing America's competitiveness with China sound? That's the major goal of a multi-billion dollar bill which got the final nod from the U.S. House of Representatives today. It's called the America Competes Act of 2022. Congressman Josh Harder, the author of one part of this measure dealing with apprenticeship, joins me now live. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Definitely. We will, of course, get the breakdown of the America Competes Act in just a minute. But first, while we have you here, there have been some pressing issues on the international stage. The situation between Ukraine and Russia being chief among them. We just reported that yesterday the Pentagon revealed intelligence indicating Russia was preparing kind of a false flag operation, accusing the Kremlin of an elaborate plot to fabricate an attack on Ukrainian forces so Russia could use that as a pretext to take military action. President Putin already has more than 100,000 troops amassed at the border. What's your take on what's happening right now? I think it's very concerning. And the intelligence that the Pentagon has now declassified about a potential fake attack is, is pretty scary. Uh, a massive war between Ukraine and Russia would be very bloody. It would cost countless uh, lives in the region, and it would damage, frankly, the peace and stability all throughout Europe. And so what we need to be doing right now is we need to make sure that we are supporting our NATO allies in the region as much as we can. And we're also making it very clear uh, to Putin and to the Kremlin what the consequences of an invasion would look like. Uh, one of the things that we're working on in, in Congress is a potential set of sanctions to, to do if Russia were to go down this road. And I think if we can make it very clear uh, that there will be real consequences for any activity, uh, that hopefully that will serve as a, as a deterrent and help us get away from this brink uh, that Russia has put the region in. You've kind of laid out what you think should be happening right now. For Americans who are watching America get involved in this and may not understand why exactly we should care, why should we care? Well, I think it's really important that there is peace and stability across Europe. We are a member of NATO uh, that was constructed during the Cold War. We have a number of allies. Ukraine is not uh, a part of NATO, but we have a lot of folks other, otherwise in the region that have our, our interests very closely tied. And we want to make sure that we're sending a strong signal to Russia uh, that an invasion is not acceptable on the, on the, on the international stage. All righty, now to another issue. Many critics of the president have expressed concern about what may happen militarily in Ukraine, given what they see as the administration's failed handling of America's departure from Afghanistan. With that kind of concern out there in a midterm election year, how critical was yesterday's win for Biden and his party nabbing the leader of ISIS in that Syrian raid? Well, I think it was a win for American security uh, and for the, the lives of, of everybody across the world. Uh, taking the leader of ISIS off the battlefield uh, was important, not just uh, for our fight against ISIS, but also to send a clear signal to terrorists internationally that we haven't given up uh, on the war of terror. And we're still uh, using American military forces to make sure that we can make life uh, safer for everybody. And I think this is a, a good opportunity to make sure that we're all thanking our men and women in uniform every day because uh, this was a very challenging raid. It was a very uh, uh, difficult circumstances. And at the end of the day, America is safer because of the work that happened. America competes. The competes part there standing for creating opportunities for manufacturing, preeminence in technology and economic strengths. Really a mouthful there. We'll put $52 billion into incentives for companies to fabricate semiconductors. We've all seen how short supply and dependence on China in this area has really stymied things from TVs to SUVs. How critical is it that the country gets a handle on this? I think you're totally right that one of the reasons we've seen things get so expensive in the Valley over the past year is that so much of what we buy is produced in China, uh, from cars to computers. And COVID has really been a reminder about how critical it is to make sure that parts of our supply chain aren't necessarily produced uh, abroad or in China, but actually manufactured domestically. And that's exactly what this bill is gonna do. It's gonna make sure that we are equipping American domestic manufacturers with the support they need uh, to level that playing field uh, and make sure that we can improve our national security, reduce our reliance on China, and most of all, actually cut costs on so many of the important goods that we should be producing right here in the United States. From the financial side of just avoiding student loans to the realization that four years of college may maybe isn't the way to advancement for everyone. Apprenticeships can be key to starting someone off right in a career. You've authored the Apprenticeship to College as Part of America Competes. Tell us how it works. 
This is going to make sure that we can create a ladder to the middle class for everybody, whether or not you have a four year college degree or not. And so it's going to make sure that we're creating more opportunities for folks right after high school. If you want to go into college, that's great. But if not, you too uh, can make sure that you're joining a, a trade school. And this lowers a lot of the barriers, uh, a lot of the barriers of cost to make sure that if you want to go get a four year philosophy degree, that's all uh, already covered by federal scholarships. But if you want to be a maintenance mechanic, a program that takes six months and uh, has a salary of $100,000 a year after graduation, you should be eligible for those same programs as well. And it's critical uh, here in the Valley because we have the talent. We just need to make sure that we're improving our education system to get more domestic manufacturing here as well. I know you're concerned about those 100,000 people that go over the Altamont Pass into the Bay to do high paying jobs. Uh, I do have to say, though, it's not just uh, the money that's drawing them over there. Part of the reason why they live here and commute is because housing is so expensive. That's also something that needs a look in the national strategy, right? Absolutely. And this is something that we have seen go up and up. Uh, one of the great uh, things that we've seen over the last couple of years is more people want to live in the valley. But the challenge is, is that creates a lot of stress in our infrastructure, uh, a lot of stress, not just on our housing system, but also on our infrastructure, on our healthcare system, on our education system. We have to catch up to that growth. And the most important thing that we can be doing is building more affordable housing for our region. Uh, and that's uh, a more important uh, now than, than ever before because of the strain on our resources as we've seen during COVID. All righty, thank you so much for checking in with us about all of these issues. We appreciate you. Thank you. All righty.